to Nocturnal. You've tuned in to the sights and sounds of Sydney. I'm Sophie. And I'm Ingrid. And do not go away because tonight's episode is so huge. You'll be calling us up going, I want to go out on a Monday evening. So get off the couch. Don't go anywhere. Tonight, we're going to a Bushdorf. I've never been to one, but tonight we're going. We're also going to check out Meme, who's a Sydney producer. We're going to check out an Israeli DJ called Scuzzy. And we have exclusive footage that we're going to be screening tonight of a Sydney musician being arrested on stage. Keep your eyes peeled. Huge, huge. Firstly, we will take you to a review of the night altogether now, which was a big tsunami benefit held at the Metro. <laughs> Backstage at All Together Now, a massive tsunami fundraiser that is happening tonight. We're talking to the three organisers here. We've got PJ, we've got Ben, and we've got Daniel. These guys have put this together, All Together Now, which is probably one of the most successful fundraisers that Sydney's seen. How you doing, Ben? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Tell us, this is a massive show with a massive lineup. Where did it all start? Uh, okay, it started for me on New Year's Eve after the tsunami happened. And I came back and I decided I, either, I, either I can volunteer to go over or put something on. Just fill in the moment for us. Where were you on New Year's Eve? Who were you with? Uh, with How did it come to you? I was with my girlfriend down, at, down the coast at uh, Scott's Head. Yeah, I was talking to her about it and I said, look, the only skills I really have are putting on gigs. So I do event management and this is something I could do. Now, all the money is going to which organisation? Uh, it's going to the Red Cross Tsunami Appeal and to UNICEF. <laughs> From J-Cats to The Herd to Darth Vegas to Jack Ozaski, it's Mid everybody. Conway, yeah. Cabaret, Mick Conway, uh, you know, there's hip hop, there's Arabesque, Gypsy. So the, the beautiful thing in Sydney at the moment, there's a blossoming music scene in Sydney. And this has kind of captured it, I think. And the ability of artists or musicians to be able to get out there and use their tool, their craft to be able to support a an event or you know something like the tsunami I think is awesome. Any idea how much money you've managed to make tonight? How many people through the door? Um, we had quite a few. I'd say we had about about 800, 900 through the door, so that's time 30. We were actually turning a lot of bands, wanted to be a part of the act, and we unfortunately had to say sorry. Uh, I just, I just we had what we were. I just wish it was this easy to put on a gig when we're trying to make money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> nine-hour event how do you stay on your toes for nine hours are you a green tea man uh, no it's just a matter of concentration I think consciousness just getting in there and becoming one with the ethereal background vibratory resonance and once I've got there once I've linked to that point I'm fine Yeah, and we are so lucky. We should uh, just cherish life every goddamn second. Live, love, laugh, celebrate, and dance a little, and that's what tonight's I about. couldn't agree with you more. Yo, yo, we're with Jake from Blue Juice. How's it going? Blurred. Oh, the tsunami victims are definitely what we're here for, and that's we are serious about that cause. I suppose, to be perfectly honest, um, Blue Juice is pretty terrible at the moment. Uh, 
two of our members died recently in a car accident and uh, I've had a lot of troubles um, with the police. But little did Jake from Blue Juice know, those words would come back to haunt him. That's right, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That's Jake from Blue Juice being pulled off stage by three heavily armed undercover policemen. Apparently, that was for real. <laughs> Ned from Blue Juice, you had your MC arrested on stage tonight. How do you feel? Weirdest thing that's ever happened. Jamie, your reaction? That's crazy, mate. That's. that's... <laughs> I thought I thought it was I don't know. I thought I thought he was getting dragged off for chucking mics or something. Jake was wearing a policeman's shirt, and according to the cops, this was a crime. Except when you're wearing the shirt in a public performance, which Jake was. Nevertheless, they took him to court six months later. The judge threw it out, and it was a big waste of taxpayers' money. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to uh, Nocturnal. We're here with Neem at Frigid. How are you going? Hello. Um, yeah, very well, thank uh, how would, you. How would you describe your own style of music without comparing it to any other kinds of music? Um, oh, that's hard because like a lot of music you just draw influences from so many different kind of, you know, different pools of, of music that's already happened. So I'd say disco funk is the influence it comes from, um, but the rhythms are, you know, very syncopated and lots of bass, like the very bass driven with the music. Yeah, like I, I treat it like a DJ set and it's uh, also like a, a live set in the sense that I'm writing the music so it's, like, it's all coming from my output and like uh, it's not playing other people's tracks but um, I just, you know, I, I spend so long in the studio getting a track the way I want it so that's how I want to present it to people when I play it out. Correct me if I'm wrong, you're from the Blue Mountains. I've lived in the Blue Mountains, I've yeah, moved around a lot. Well, well, does your environment influence your music then? Like, where did you record? Your last album was the big, the big hoo-ha. Hoo where did um, you record that? It was partly in the mountains and partly in Sydney, in Redfern, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's more it's more about where I'm happy living. As long as I'm happy, then my music's happy. And how do you get how do you get your super funky bass lines? Is that all sampled? No, I don't use any samples for bass lines. I just write them all myself. Just um, with either like uh, guitar samples, like that I can play on the keyboard, or synth samples. I just play them all in. So. Um, yeah, I'm um, uh, looking at doing some vinyl overseas for, um, for a label in the, in the States. So the vinyl response, for the Super People vinyl I did, it was a really good response in Sydney. And just one, one more thing finally, can, can, can we like on the show or anyone out there book you to put posters up? Because man, your posters are still everywhere for your launch <laughs> party. Like, is that something you see a future in maybe? Uh, putting posters yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that not. was hardcore, <laughs> they were everywhere. I saw you at like 1am on Oxford Street sticking them up. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, put the hard yards in. But... 
No, if anyone's interested, go to www.meme.org and you can get any info about Meme. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there and updates about gigs. So, yeah, come to my shows. They're fun. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, this has been Meme uh, at Frigid. Thanks for coming down. Oh, cheers. Good luck with everything. Right. And uh, we'll see you playing out there. That was Meme, a Sydney producer, performing at the At Newtown. Sophie recently came back from his whirlwind European tour, so he's doing really well for himself, which is awesome. Now, if we can just quickly mention, if you guys would like us to come to your gigs, film your parties, show it on this station, please get in touch. Our website is full of useful information. Alternatively, if you have a camera and you'd like to film your own stuff, throw us the tape, please do so. Ingy, what's next? Coming up, I'm really excited about this. Scott and I went down to Space Club, which is in Liverpool Street, and we went to our first Psytrance extravaganza where Scuzzy, being an Israeli DJ, performed there that evening. Scott interviewed the crazy cat and it was a really awesome night. So check out this footage that we reviewed, guys. We're also going to check out the hauntingly beautiful Mouse Moon. They're a Newcastle band. They played at the Surrey Hills Excelsior. Dylan filmed them. Let's have a look. Hi, we're here with, um, you, you might say, the king of Psytrance, Scuzzy. Uh, where are you from? From Israel, man. Yeah, now, uh, like this is your first Australian visit, is that right? What? First Australian visit here? Basically, I've been here four years ago. And uh, I come again in November for um, Earthcore or something. Yeah. How would you describe your sound? Uh, transcore or rock trance, not really psy trance. Yeah. So you're, you've, uh, you've actually come from a punk rock background. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how has that influenced the way you write psy trance and trance? Basically, I put the guitars inside, I make some crazy wicked stuff with this, I put the rock inside, the electronic, this is how it's blown me. I come most of the, I like to make like a new sound of rock trance. Yeah. I play most of the time in rave, so it's like fitted. that just comes to your mind as the best place you've ever played? Brazil, Japan, Tokyo, Israel. Wicked. Nice. Um, and this is your CD launch? Yeah, I'm sitting launching here uh, Zoo 3. It's a double CD. Full of bombs, killer stuff, wicked, weird, trance, rock, all of them together, like mix, but very full on, very dance floor, and we're going to hear it soon. Okay, this was a joke. Okay, I make 
smell like the teen spirit. It was kind of joke that we were sitting and we said like, let's make, let's reborn Nirvana in a way, but in a new style. We did this, we did Prodigy, we did Benny Benassi push me the satisfaction. satisfaction. And this one was released in the vision, in um, the label of Benny Benassi. All right. Yeah. So, so uh, what smells like Teen Spirit? Was that a legal, a legal um, cover, or was that a bootleg? No, everything is illegal, full on legal. Nothing is illegal, man. We cannot work illegal in this kind of size. Yeah, right. And uh, how many copies have you sold of that? Actually, we're just launching it now. I can tell you in four months, every four months, you know. Right. And um, have you ever played at a go trans party? I play mostly in raves. Raves, it's outdoor, full of people, everybody with their hands up. Different story. Nice. And uh, so, what's in the future for you? Future for me, it's an album. I'm making a project. I'm making a, a remix for Prodigy, for Firestarter. We're going to make it wicked. I think it's going to be cool. We try to get permission for that. Right. So, it's going to happen. So easy. Well, thanks for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hailing from Australia's sixth largest city of Newcastle comes a band the likes of which you've never seen. They're called the Hauntingly Beautiful Mouse Moon. So, who came up with the name? I think um, I did when I was writing a musical. <laughs> Now what we're trying to do with the egg and things like that is just to have a big moment of uh, <coughs> release, release yeah. of the human <laughs> oh, spirit, yeah. the yeah, ancient like a sort of human spirit. Something to satisfy all the senses. When you see people smile more than when they have fun. That's what we want to make them have. We want them to take off their shirts. Yeah, and shoes. And shoes. Yeah, and whatever they want. We want them to take off most Put of their clothes, or if, if they will, if they and then will. paint what's exposed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fun. And just being a rock band for five minutes is fun as well. So we do that sometimes. But I've never had like a writing a, a uh, playing a, an acoustic, really sparse acoustic soft song is fun as well. And being a psychedelic band is cool too. And being uh, something else is cool as well. So we try and do them all, just, even just at a bass level for our own enjoyment. explore the opportunities that that venue provides and like we won't be trying to do a great big human spirit release explosion or anything it's not likely to happen there but like if we do if our manager or something happens and we get, end up with a 40 minute set at a pub then sometimes we just think well let's just do a good solid set and sometimes we just do a solid set of rock I and mean, then if we were somewhere and we looked out there's all rockers out there we'd probably do that wouldn't we like yeah. we'd sort of we provide for them. Thank you all very much. Uh, now, uh, we're here for the last I don't know when we'll be back in Sydney, but uh, we will be back sometime soon. So, if you enjoyed that. So that was hauntingly beautiful Mouse Moon. 
total poetry. Mm, what's next? Next, Dylan goes on a a really fun adventure to a bush doof. That's right, it's called Regrowth. They planted trees. Dylan's mysteriously disappeared, that's okay. Let's have a look at the tape. Let's check it out. In March of this year, three hours south of Sydney, the Regen Projects crew held their first event and it was a stunner. It was on a beautiful block of land and there was heaps of DJs and live acts to keep you entertained. Uh, to kind of kick things off uh, early in the evenings on the Friday and the Saturday night, uh, there was uh, Peregrine, who are local uh, folk pop band, who are very cool. In Tropic came, but uh, half the members got lost trying to find the place because it was so remote. So there was this cool kind of weird jam which featured members of Entropic and members of Peregrine that went on for a while. And then on the Saturday night, before all the, the DJs got started, there was uh, Panda, who are an awesome kind of funk blues band who got a massive drum circle going and got everyone uh, dancing along. Then of course there was heaps of Psytrance DJs like Cyanosense from Brisbane, Cyber Original, uh, Clan Analogs Deprogram did a wicked uh, live set and uh, Rinkadink all the way from South Africa for his only show did a wicked dawn set. <laughs> We got lost on a bushwalk. If you note here, the guy who owns the, the block of land says it's 45 minutes to the nearest swimming hole. It's about 45 minutes down there and back. And well, it took us like at least a couple of hours to basically walk and cascade and fall down this creek bed down to the bottom of the hill, but we found this great patch of water. It was an adventure. Aside from all the remoteness, we planted trees. And uh, it was a very cool idea, because uh, I've worked on music festivals before, and generally, it, they just generate waste, and this was kind of about giving something back to the environment. All up, we planted 1,100 trees in less than two hours, which was an awesome effort by everyone. To see if they're doing any more parties, check out regenprojects.org, um, and I can't wait for the next one. That looked like heaps of fun. I want to come next time, Dylan, to one of those bush doofs. But tonight, everyone, that wraps it up for our huge show. Next week, we have a massive show for you. Sophie, what do we have? We've got performance poetry. We've got local musicians. We've got Protein, which is a drum and bass night that you will all be glad has been resurrected. So yes. if you want more information about the show, check out our website as per usual. Drop us a line and we'll endeavour to get back to you in no time at all. So thanks for watching. Good night. See ya.